It is at 30 minutes past the hour, 5 o'clock. Welcome to you. In case you have just joined us, you have missed out on a lot, actually. We have been talking all things local football, to going all as far as transfer news. Um, you know, we know Galinga now is, has joined Amazolu Usoto. We do also know that Opa congratulations once again, has now joined um, the Chili Boys. But right now, it is about that time that we speak to a man who is quite influential when it comes to AC football. By the way, Swallows is in South African, a professional football club. It is based in Soweto in the city of Johannesburg in the Gauteng province. It was founded in 1947. Swallows are one of the original two Soweto clubs together with Orlando Paris until relegation in the 2014-2015 season. The club had played every season of the Premier Soccer League. They won the 2019-2020 National First Division and will compete in the 2020-2021 South African Premier Soccer League. We call it the hashtag DSTV Premiership and they play their home matches at Dobson Stadium. But the most important thing really is about the man who is at the helm of this team, the Cape Tonian who joined Durban side Real Eagles on the 30th of June 2017. His job was quite simple. He would be second in charge for Alan Fries. He has previously enjoyed stints with Milano FC, um, Cape Town, um, Igaba Sporting, Stellenbosch FC, as well as a Cape Town All Stars. We do have the man on the line who goes by the name of Coach Brandon Druder. Hello, sir. Thank you for joining us in Massive 11. Hi, um, good day, good day to all the listeners. Uh, absolute pleasure to be on the show. You know, it is very exciting to have you on the line, sir, because firstly, I know how busy you are as an individual. And um, before we go any further, thank you once again for joining us. Uh, it's, a, it's a pleasure. I don't know about being that big. <laughs> the <laughs> students of the game and we're all, all still learning. But um, thank you. Uh, thank you for having me. Yeah, good evening, coach. This is Chabu Matangu. Ah, how are you, man? <laughs> no, I'm good, coach. I'm good, coach. Uh, I also want to say thank you, coach, for giving us uh, your time. Nah, it's like I said now, it's an absolute uh, joy and, and pleasure to be on a show like this. And to, um, yeah, um, answer questions as, as, as well. And as honest as I can. <laughs> no pressure, no pressure. Don't worry about it. Don't no pressure. <laughs> Let's just start off from the beginning, coach. I mean, you come from your humble beginnings, to be honest. Growing up in the Cape Flats, um, tell us firstly about where your love for football began. Before we go as far as talking about exactly what you do right now. Yeah, look, um, the love of football, um, as as long as I can remember back. Um, it, it was always there. Uh, I had so many cousins and nephews, um, friends um, from a young age that um, football was our outlet. Football was our outlet and we you know, played it before school, after school, during school. Um, Jabo knows what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, yeah. But the new there's, there's no stopping it, you understand? So um, it was always there. We got into trouble also just for playing football. Um, I remember during the apartheid days also when you had when you were playing in the street, it was uh, it was also stopped and and you had to run. So um, um, a lot of sacrifices has been made to uh, to be where I am today. Um, like you said, humble beginnings. Um, it was always there. It, um, I can't remember um, being so in love with another sport um, as the Ambit football. So, so yeah, it started from from as as far back as I can remember, five even before five years old, because um, I had cousins who played pro football. Um, um, was a supporter of the old Cape Town Spurs, Sea Point Swords. Um, these are old clubs in 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 Cape Town. So, yeah, um, it, it, it's it's I can't remember um, being this in love with with any other sport. And, and uh, uh, coach, um, um, can you please uh, t- tell us uh, about how did uh, the head coach position at, at Trilos came about? Well, so um, I was still head coach at um, Richards Bay FC, um, and it was my second season there. I remember finishing just out of a playoff spot in the first season. Um, 
while they were fighting relegation and safe relegation um, the previous season on the last day of the league. So I was still um, head coach at Richards Bay. Um, I would say I wouldn't say really the the owner and myself didn't see um, didn't agree on uh, eye to eye. On, 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 let's say eye to eye. Yeah. Um, it was more of of uh, the support staff, more of the the management or team manager and and officials like that. They didn't agree. We 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 had our differences. You understand and. Um, I remember we were five games in season, and Richards Bay was still unbeaten and number two on the lock uh, when the the call came through um, from Swallows from uh, Mr. Panyaza Um yes, yes, I was considering it, but at that time um, um, it had to be a big decision because um, Swallows was 14 on the lock, and our year was with Richards Bay second on the lock, so it wasn't an easy decision to make, but. Um, um, yeah, uh, um, I remember just before we Richards Bay left to play um, Jomo Cosmos, and I wasn't happy with the logistics. And I told that uh, the team manager, listen, um, if we continue like this, and and the players are suffering because we weren't traveling uh, comfortably, the players weren't at ease. I, I, I mean, a trip from Richards Bay to Guiani, we. Cosmos was playing uh, that season. It, it was a 17-hour bus trip, and we weren't comfortable at all. And I, and I told him, if you, if this is the way you want to do things, then I might as well resign. That was my exact words to to the team manager. And while traveling to to Guiani and getting to Guiani, um, there was a car waiting already for me. And the team manager just said to me, "Listen, coach, we accept your resignation." And you have to leave immediately. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. yeah. We we want your tracksuit back. We want all the club attire back. And this was in the reception. And I had to step down and, and give all my club attire. Because they, they even knew I wanted their tracksuit back. <laughs> 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 yeah, so I, I know, I know. It, it sounds funny to me now, but I know in your situation, yeah. it it was not yeah. a funny yeah. moment, you know. <laughs> hey, yeah, and 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 while stripping down and shit, but um, um, Jeffrey, um, that was the team manager. Um, I didn't resign. I, I told you I'm thinking about resigning, but yeah, you're accepting resignation that um, is not there. So um, he said no, but you said you're gonna resign, and I didn't want to argue. And yeah, so I just accepted, and I I just told myself, "Ask no use fighting." They accepted the resignation that is not did, and maybe I'm not the right person that they want for the job. Got into the car, yeah. Um, and while traveling to Owar Tambo because they already booked my flight as well. <laughs> so um, luckily, um, we were going to spend um, about two weeks in Guiani and Joburg because they we were playing Cosmos and the, uh, the next fixer was also a Joburg fixer. So we we're going to stay that side and I just, while packing, I just took all my clothes. <laughs> and I, had <laughs> so yeah. I said, ah, I'm going home then. Yeah, you understand. So so while traveling to our Tambo, I, I spoke to my manager and said, listen, um, we, uh, I just walked away. These people say his resignation. So there's no termination package. There's nothing. I'm unemployed at this very moment we are speaking and there's no income so uh, I told her um, Basha and Michael that um, Cosmo um, Swallows has made contact so can you please engage and see if they're still interested and she phoned me back within 10 minutes that Swallows wants to meet immediately before I board the flight at our tumble and but coach, I said no I'm going to get <laughs> yeah yeah but coach the <laughs> one thing that I've noticed sorry for interrupting you coach but the one thing that I've learned about you because I have been doing a lot of research on you um, is that I mean you were asked at some point by Eagles and you found yourself in the similar predicament where you had to make your way home and you had no plan but it seems as though the moment you go through adversity you know you are very spiritual and it seems as though God then comes through for you at that time Amen. Amen, my sister. I just, I just wanted to say that as well. The same thing happened at Eagles on a flight, and my phone was off, and when I switched it on the landing in Cape Town, there was a job waiting for me. Um, and the same year now, uh, I was basically about not even an hour, let's say, take what, what does it take, four or five hours from mm-hmm. Guiani to get to our Tambo, and our, that, that, that was the duration I was unemployed. Because yeah, uh, Basha Michaels um, set it up immediately. Um, agreed with with Swallows. Um, she crossed all the eyes and all the uh, 
dat te doen, de ijs en kroeg de tien aan mij af. Zo so, ja, hij zei dan komen we home first. En nu zwallen ze zich in de interesse te fly me back on the Monday. Die komen zijn in de country en dat is not working the next day. And yeah, 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 and yeah. coach, I, I've got. Uh, let, let, I'll say maybe two questions, but I'll ask them uh, in, in in once. You know, uh, can you just tell us the moment when the team got uh, promoted into the top flight? How was the mood? How did you feel? Did you see this the, that one coming? And and the second one is how 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 important is the mental health within your squad, and how do you enforce a, a healthy and mental? A, a, a healthy standard into your team like living a healthy a, be a professional sleep well you know rest well train hard mm -hmm. how do you enforce yeah. those uh, those um, yep. uh, standards coach yeah um, like I'm talking to a player so so you know exactly what I'm talking about when I answer this question so um, the first thing the first thing um, first question remember when I came to to Swallows there were 14 on the lot so um, management thought there was absolutely no no chance that we could win the league with these players. So my mandate for the first season when I walked in was a top eight finish, uh, stabilize the team, and then um, yeah, we just went ahead and did win, prom win promotion. Um, yeah, going to the bubble, I think uh, there was still nine games left, so um, we we saw yeah. that we might have a chance, an outside chance, uh, because I. Uh, TTM and Ajax were flying at that stage. Ajax had, yes, uh, Ajax was leading. Leading us, yeah. And so was TTM. But looking at the fixtures, and uh, what I'm currently doing now is well, is looking at the running now, um, which is a very crucial stage of the season. And looking at Ajax's fixtures and our and our fixtures and Ajax and TTM and, uh, and Swallows and, T and Ajax and TTM must still play. I said, well, if we take the three points off them that six points and that will close the gap significantly that will add pressure on Ajax and both TTM to win all the games and yeah um, that was our plan but uh, while in the bubble um, you mentioned now uh, that we continue with, with our three meetings uh, we continue with our, our praying continue with our, our, our motivational sessions as well so um, even going into the bubble we created our own bubble so the place was mm. used to, was used to the conditions in the bubble because um, other players were walking around and wanting to leave and players were leaving the bubble because they couldn't handle it yeah it was uh, stressful be yeah, because and coach, because yeah, sorry yeah. to interrupt, uh, coach, again, just because of a uh, uh, time, time is you know is uh, yeah, sure. becoming against against us. For my follow up question on what I've just asked you is why is because I remember when you took over from Swilos. Swilos first they never had a preseason training. Mm. And and yeah. uh, if if I'm not mistaken, if my mind serves me correctly, I'm I'm stand to be corrected. Yeah. Uh, they didn't even have had uh, the preseason, and while the the league has already started, the team still struggled. They were getting players weak yes, by and uh, financially one, one way, mm -hmm. maybe two players a day. Mm. Then maybe next week you get one. <laughs> yes. Now you are fourteen, yeah. and then after two days, maybe there's <laughs> someone coming. Now you are fifteen until you know yes. until you had a, a solid team, and mm. you managed yeah. to get back into your ways. And you know you went all the way, and and you won the league, coach. That that's amazing. That's it's massive so, coach. Yeah, we we ended up with I came in with forty two players, huh? I had to cut it down. Now you, yeah, you now you had forty two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you started with nine players. <laughs> and, uh, I remember. So um for you also, um from from being a player, um if you are outside the group that is playing or outside the squad, it's always uh it's always mentally tough for you. You understand? Mm. And with being a person and, and then and then uh, next week, the squad is announced again. You alone will now engage with other players. It's also not in the squad. And then um, that group becomes, sooner or later you'll find it's 10, 11 players that is not happy and sulking and walking around and training. You understand? So that you have to manage. That's why I prefer a, a smaller squad, um, a, a squad of 24, 22 players that I can manage. You understand? And um, yeah. being a footballer, um, the principles of uh, performance it entails the mental health. It entails the the psychological. Very part important. As well. If you're not, 
yeah, if you are not in a, a, a good mental state to perform, it's not going to happen. If there's problems at home, if there's problems with the coach, if there's problems with your, your teammates, if there's problems with your kids, you understand, um, you're not going to perform um, at optimal level. So, I, with me, the first thing I, I remember having a conversation with, with, with Vuyo as well. Because um, you can see the way Vuyo looks with oh, the muscles and everything. Yeah, yes. Yeah, so, yeah. So I told him, and there was players that was jogging in the morning, jogging in the evenings after training. I said, you guys need to stop because I need to manage everything. Imagine you going for a gym session in the morning before training. You come to training and, and it's an intense session and you can't handle it because you're tired from that session. Then it affects my yes, yeah. You understand? So I needed to control as much as I can. I wanted to know about um, Jesus' wife that just gave birth now. I wanted to know about his, uh, like his house, his home. I wanted the same with Fuyo. I wanted the same with the younger guys as well. How are you spending your times? Who's your girlfriends? Or what are you doing to take her out? Where are you going? You understand? So I'm not a control free, but the more you can manage as a football coach, the better for you because then you know exactly uh, where, where the psyche is. Is, uh, yeah, they're not going to perform, what is bothering them, uh, how they are spiritually, how they are mentally, how they are yeah. physically. So control as much as you can, but even to just create that bond. For you as a coach, you need to be step out of your comfort zone. You can't be arrogant, you can't be a disciplinarian. Mm-hmm. You have to manage these people that is, uh, you, you can say... They're adults and they're way. human. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Even e- even if there were machines, machines break at some point That's as well. That's true. Mm. If they're not maintained. Yeah. So, yeah. So even uh, you mentioned something about preseason as well. There was no preseason w- w- with me. Y- yes. Um, it, it, it's it's not about um, getting fit and getting super fit. Zabu. So, you can only get so fit. You can't get fit. Yes, fit. yes coach, I know. <laughs> I know you can bring the best physical yeah. trainer in the world, but you can, you can, you know, your limit is there. Yeah. 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 So the game guides you on how your preseason should, should go. If the game is about 90 minutes, I will push my players or train my players to play for 90 minutes. You Speak- know what I'm um, the, Yes, coach. Yes. Sorry for interrupting mm-hmm. once again. Speaking of 90 minutes, coach, um, you know, Swallows came into the top flight, the DSTV Premiership, and you started very, very strongly. In fact, you are still maintaining that status. However, I'm starting to see that, um, you know, when it comes to the lock standings right now, you are not as high, yeah. um, you know, on the lock standings as you were initially. Would you just want to tell us exactly what the plan is? Or maybe, you know, what is your outlook? What do you think is something that you need to work towards in order for you to find yourself? you know back at the top again look yeah um we, we we can go two ways about that you understand we can we we can throw in the excuse that we are a newly promoted team um we're getting to know the league um, um we're wanting to we wanted to maintain the season we can throw in that excuse but our start has put us under so much pressure our success um, has put us under so much pressure that people started talking about um, the title contenders. Yes, for new yeah. team, this is unheard of. You understand? <laughs> so that's about our start. But for a new team anywhere in the world, just to come up and and then win promotion and um, dominate. Oh, sorry, win 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 the league. Mm, um, mm. While you're having sundowns, you're having pirates, you're having Chiefs, you're having even Cape Town City around. Mm-hmm. Even mm-hmm. Yes. Celtic that was performing that way they were last season. Uh, and you, that's that's a, a rookie in the league. Um, coming and saying this, it, it's it's a bit disrespectful towards other people and to other teams who mm-hmm. have done that. Mm-hmm. So, so our success at the beginning or in the first round has put us under a bit of pressure. Um, people is talking about the slump that we are going through at the moment with the draws. And I think it's natural um, that that happens. Yeah, um, I, I wouldn't say it's natural. But um, as a coach, you have to, to analyze, you have to see what is going wrong, and you have to fix it, you understand? But if you are uh, somebody who looks at stats and, and facts and wants to speak uh, logically, you have to look at what can we c- compare the slum to. Mm-hmm. There was no slum before this. Yes. Uh, what, I, what I mean by this is we weren't in the PSL before this. So how can you say we're going through a slum? You have nothing to compare to. to anything. Yeah. So what we're doing at the moment, yes, um, it's one point at a time, um, but we're still moving forward. It's not three points, but we are, I'm sure there's other teams that would love to take that point or the 12. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's true. Very true. Yeah, Especially now, 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 so, now there's no, if you get something, coach, <laughs> hey, it's, it's, it's better, better than, than nothing. nothing. It, 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 at this stage of the league, yeah. yes, yes. 
it, it, especially with the last games, uh, you know, um, the team playing the teams at the yeah. bottom this time of the season, you. You, you don't want to face the team. It's a the disaster. Box. Yes, it, <laughs> yeah. they they always yeah. uh, had this uh, so-called teams who are running to you know to win the league. And coach, because yeah, of, yeah because of another time, I want to ask you a very controversial uh, controversial question okay. there. And I want yes, the answer just only need yes or no, coach, <laughs> before I can really ask you about you know the main the real question. Yeah, coach, do you see? I mean, you've won a, a coach of the month, I think, twice. Yep. Yeah. Or, or three times, if I'm not mistaken, mm-hmm. and and nice. and in your first uh, season in a in a DS TV Premiership, do you see yourself as a coach of the season contender? Mm-hmm. Yes or no, coach? And then I'm gonna ask the question that I'm supposed to ask you. <laughs> um, no, <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, coach. I won't ask you why. Okay, we will save it for another time. Yes. But you are doing very well. My my last question, coach, which is very very important. It includes uh, the country, which is uh, our national team, Bafana yeah. Bafana. What what is your take? Uh, uh, in short, uh, uh, with the development in uh, in South Africa, and what can what can we do? To help uh, Bafana Bafana to, uh, to 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 be where we think you know they belong, which is maybe the top three in in Africa, maybe top fifty in the world, in the world because yeah. we, with so much that we have, financial mm-hmm. muscle, infrastructure, you know everything that we have. To, uh, what what what's your take, Coach? What what should we do, Coach? Yes, and just by the way, Coach, while you answer that question, also tell me um, after that, would you be willing to coach Bafana? Yeah. Can I start at the <laughs> at the back? <laughs> yes, I will be willing to. It's hot, coach. It's hot. Anybody. It's hot in here, coach. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, Jabu, you're not gonna take that risk, and you don't. You can, you're not testing yourself. You understand what I'm saying? Um, it's international. Yeah. States. It's 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 um, on a good platform for yourself. You understand? And it's international. Yes. Space. That's what, what every ambitious coach or young coach that dreams of the coach is country at one stage. You understand? So yes, but uh, at this stage, I'm under contract with Swallows. If the national body calls, they have to go via my employers. But um, yes, that that is one of the dreams. Yeah. Awesome. That's, that's yeah. Dream. No, coach. Yes. <laughs> number number two. Um, what can we do to help um, the farmer? Yes, yes, yes uh, coach. In your own I view, should have seen the, they should have seen the the swallows team to get the draw. Huh? Cause twelve draws, we draw it splits, my man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, coach, hey, you draws. You are called loose draws now. <laughs> yeah, you need better draw swallows. <laughs> but um, on a serious note. Um, I think your your second question, your first question ties into one another. Mm-hmm. Um, with with development, I, there was a plan by SAFA. Uh, vision 2022 or Vision 2021, I speak under correction. Yeah. Okay, there was 21. a plan by, ah, that one by need... SAFA. Yeah. Okay, so no. they, need to, they need to go back and see where they went wrong and really analyze it and be honest with one another. Because if you are honest about development, we are so far behind other countries that it's not even a joke. But people is talking about grassroots level and, and all this, but it starts at the top. Um, mm-hmm. Yes. The, the people in control are not serious about implementing um, programs, about employing the correct people, um, then we're never gonna get it right. You understand? If you're gonna go with your your school teachers, your parents that are still coaching at at, at grassroots level, then uh, we are not gonna get the best players out. When that is very true. Is not yeah. Gonna take place. You understand? Development is not gonna take place because that parents want his son to play. Um, the teacher um, just wants to give everybody a game. Um, yes, youngsters should play. Everybody should play. That is that is the job. But if you're gonna talk elite, then there's no emotions involved. The yeah. pitch must uh, must go. You understand? You need to be must, objective. Must be involved. Yeah, and the same with the coaches. The thing about South African coaching is that. Um, um, me being a, a PSL coach or professional coach, I would not want to go back to youth development. The reason being, there's a reason I'm not being arrogant because of money and that, or fame or coaching in the highest level. No, the toughest job is the youth coaches. It's mm-hmm. the toughest job. Yeah. Because why um, you need to have hair on your teeth. You, you Because you're dealing with, with, with so many diverse 
uh, people. Then you're dealing with so many characteristics that's, uh, that is age, uh, that should be age appropriate. Yes. And you're dealing, at, uh, you're dealing with puberty, you're dealing with adolescence. Exactly. And with, also um, coming from age. households that are not, you know, that are disenfranchised. So you have to deal so with that first. Things. Yeah, you understand so many things. Um, that's why I say um, the youth coaches um, that is there know what they are doing and investing all the time because that youth coach needs to be the coach, the physio, the kit man, the driver, um, the fitness trainer, everything. You understand? So because the academies, there is a few that is getting it right. Um, you're talking about the uh, elite academy, Sundowns, um, Chiefs, um, um, the, the elite ones. Super sports. Right. But, yeah, because of because of um, the financial muscles that they have. But um, we find so many fly-by-night academies that is going up all over the show because these days people are paying for trials, people are paying for accommodation, people are paying for transport because they want to get the youngsters to go in there. But um, um, the correct people and um, investing in the youth, we must invest more money and more time in the youth if you want to um, help our football grow and get the farmer to where they're supposed to be because I still feel that um, we can do better in that regard. But it starts at the top. It starts with the parents as well, uh, with the teachers as well, because in our days, Zabu, yeah. uh, when we were successful, we won the Nations Cup, when we uh, went to the World Cups, um, we came out of our apartheid area, era, sorry, era, we came out of, uh, from a, uh, how can I say now, from a technology point of view, um, football is competing, kids are, we are not playing anymore. Yeah. Uh, we're not playing yeah, uh, school. Coach, we're not playing during school yeah. and after school. Yeah, of course. It's, it's not, yes, no, sorry. Sir. Yeah, no, so, sorry to interrupt. Yo, yes. we, we are I feel running. like we need to have a yeah, longer conversation. We, like, we need to have a longer conversation. <laughs> no, we need Otherwise, to. we're going to lose our jobs. Also. <laughs> yes. But but thank you so yeah, much, no, Coach, no, 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 uh, you know, for, for, for uh, giving yeah. us, uh, t- for to being with us in our midst uh, on Massive 11. Yeah. And we wish you all the best, Coach, moving forward yeah. with, uh, with trilos or with uh, with your uh, uh, coaching career yes, yes. and you with your family life coach may god bless you thank you so much coach thank you Amen. before thank i you say so goodbye god bless you too god bless thank you sir thank you. and actually to be honest with you you have accomplished you. great things in a very short space of time and i think you deserve this thank you coach Mm-hmm. <laughs> Massive 11, the mecca of football lovers. <laughs> With Itumele Banda, Zepi Worldwide, Kululeko Mkeo, Christoph Bongo, and Jabu Makam.